p.m. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, again, my name is Juan Luis Carranza. I am a business services coordinator uh, for the Fresno Regional Workforce Development Board, and I am part of their uh, Fresno Business Services Center team. Uh, so just a little bit about our agency and the work we do throughout Fresno County for the benefit of our, of our business uh, communities. Uh, our agency provides uh, business services and support through workforce development programs that allow businesses to have access to qualified pre-screen job candidates, coordinate and customize recruitment events, and upskill training for current employees to retain talent, especially during these times that uh, well, we're all going through uh, retaining talent is, is quite an essential uh, uh, task for many of our business owners out there. Uh, I'd like to share that we administer the Fresno Forbes Partnership, which is formed by 12 local public and private organizations that are that have united with one common goal, which is to help your business. Through this partnership, you can have assistance for your startup company, support on business expansion and retention. I think the, the second one is, is quite uh, an imperative. Uh, so once you're in the flow? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I think I missed that. Uh, uh, I'll just go ahead and continue. Uh, again, the Fresno Forbes Partnership provides uh, business uh, services and support in business expansion and retention efforts. Uh, so the second one being quite important, especially right now, that many of our business communities have been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. So retention is a huge piece within the economic development efforts for our area. Uh, layoff, aversion, and transition strategies are also part of our services through the partnership at the Fresno Forbes Partnership. So it's definitely a great way to, to receive services in, regard, in terms of that subject. Uh, the great thing about this is that you can get access and support through the Fresno Forbes Partnership at no cost. All of this is provided uh, to the business communities uh, uh, for free. So uh, any challenges uh, from a business standpoint, uh, the partnership is here to support you and guide you and connect you to the appropriate resources. Uh, all of this is, is provided uh, through a great effort uh, with these organizations and including uh, two of those who are joining us this morning, uh, our co-host, the Fresno Area Hispanic Foundation, and one of our presenters, the Small Business Development Center, that will be uh, providing information uh, during this uh, webinar as well. So thank you both for joining us today. We're very thankful for the partnership. I would also like to highlight our rapid response team efforts that have been quite uh, incredible during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic in benefit of our businesses and the workers that have been impacted uh, by the current situation. So we have a team dedicated to uh, supporting their businesses, to supporting the workers that uh, have been impacted by this uh, unfortunate pandemic that we're all going through. So definitely, uh, I'll be more than glad to provide information about that particular program if you're going uh, through some situations in, in terms of that subject. If you're experiencing layoffs or closures, we're here to help you, we're here to connect you, and more more than glad to, to uh, guide you through that process if you need assistance with that. Uh, with this being said, I'd like to turn it over to my co-host, uh, Sandra Vidrio, which is with the Fresno Area Hispanic Foundation. Thank you, Juan, for the introduction. Welcome everyone, my name is Sandra Vidrio, Business Development Officer for the Fresno Area Hispanic Foundation. We are a nonprofit organization with the mission to promote education and self-sufficiency. And I would be sharing a few, just a few remarks in regards to our programs and services, uh, which include the Technical Assistance Program, our microloan program in our downtown business hub. And our bilingual incubator is located in downtown Fresno, and it's equipped to offer office space for startup and existing businesses, in addition to conference and training facilities. We assist individuals that are looking to start a business or expand their business by providing them with the tools, educational training, and resources for business growth. At the moment, our team is staying informed with um, our business community by sharing up-to-date resources and hosting weekly webinars on relevant topics related to COVID-19. Please feel free to reach out for assistance by calling our team at 559-222-8705 or sending me an email. Uh, and I also would like to say thank you to Fresno Business Services Center and all of our presenters this morning for 
uh, joining us to, to provide this great resource to our community. And with that, I will pass it on to Juan. All right, Sandra, thank you very much. So, all right, let's, let us dive right in. As we all know, we're all going through unprecedented times that present challenges that we've never seen before. Some, if not all of those challenges, uh, have uh, greatly and negatively, in many cases, impacted our business communities at a community, city, and, and county level. From uh, social media, uh, you know, social distancing mandates to new ways of conducting business, uh, the current situation uh, presents both a challenge and an opportunity for our business communities. Uh, you know, now is the time for our businesses to, to get even more creative, to stay in touch with their customers, to, to have access to, to additional audience and to try to keep their business afloat, try to keep their business operating and sometimes keep them their business open. So uh, the goal of this webinar is to facilitate information on how our business communities can utilize technology, especially social media platforms and apps, to stay in touch with their customers, to reach customers, and obviously to, to leverage technology in general uh, uh, to conduct business, conduct business at a distance. Now that we have all these social distancing mandates, it definitely prevents many of our business to, to open or operate, and, and it's a great way uh, through this webinar to find out ways to, to help our local business communities on how to stay in touch, how to stay connected, and how to leverage technology to stay in business. Our agenda for today is the following. We will start with our first presenter, Miguel Martinez, who is the founder of the social media agency, Influencia. Miguel will provide insightful information on the different social media platforms available to promote your business online. And our second speaker is Charlene, Director of Sales Development at Order Slip, a mobile ordering app for restaurants. And our third presenter will be Jose Aragin, Strategic Marketing Specialist and Consultant at the Small Business Development Center. Jose will share about the different communication platforms that are useful to keep connected with your clients. We will end the meeting by sharing details and other upcoming webinars and followed by our Q&A session with all of our presenters. I would now like to introduce you to our first presenter, Miguel Martinez. Miguel and his team have years of experience in managing digital and social marketing for clients in the Bay Area like Wells Fargo, Logitech, Google Nest, and now businesses in the Central Valley. Miguel, welcome, and I would like to introduce you to our webinar. And I will stop the share, that way you can share with us uh, your screen for the presentation. Yeah, sure thing. Hey guys, uh, can you guys hear me? Is my audio coming in? Okay. Yes. Okay, good. I'm gonna uh, turn on my screen because I feel like um, we should be able to see each other here. So hopefully that uh, comes through. Hello guys, um, it's me from my house, uh, staying safe, but uh, appreciate the introduction. As mentioned, um, I am part of Influencia. We're a social media marketing team and um, I'm grateful to be a part of uh, this webinar and, and I know that uh, businesses out there are struggling right now so um, anything we can do to help. Uh, personally I'm going to be going giving you guys an overview of Facebook and Instagram. Um, it's a lot of a lot of data a lot of content so I'm just going to skim through it through some of the important stuff but the goal is going to be really to uh, optimize uh, our channels as much as we can uh, I'm gonna share my screen here and and um, and yeah, as like as, as mentioned, it's you know it's 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 hard times right now, and this information I'm gonna share with you is nothing, it's definitely nothing new. And some of you guys are, uh, as small business owners are already incorporating uh, much of this uh, on your own. Um, so it, um, some of the stuff may be familiar to you, but uh, we'll jump right in uh, here. Let me um, just go ahead and. Go full screen here. 
Um, I'm going to skip over some of this uh, stuff that you guys already know um, and just skip to the to the meat stuff. And I asked the host, I, I know we're limited in time, so um, if we're getting close to time, just give me a shout and, and I can speed it up here. Uh, but I'll keep the clock in mind. Uh, but anyways, Facebook, one of the channels that we're covering and one of the ones that some of you as small business owners and, and managers are, are leveraging. Um, and uh, so I kind of want to go over some, some concrete stuff to, to keep in mind before posting. Uh, first, we start off with your profile. Um, I'm, throughout the presentation, you'll see some examples of some uh, businesses. Uh, this one, I don't know, some of you may be familiar with it, but there's, it's based out of Los Angeles and it's a retail store uh, called Hija de Tu Madre. And it's uh, really, it's just, uh, they're a good example and I like to use them because they, they really incorporate some best practices here. Um, so one thing to keep in mind is, you know, your, your Facebook profile is your first point of contact. Is, is basically if someone doesn't know your business and, and they're, you know, they come across your profile is going to be your the introduction to your brand. Uh, so making sure that you you know you're you're being you're easy to recognize across platforms is important. Um, I always tell people use your logo. Make sure your your profile photo isn't cluttered um, and your messaging is consistent. Right. So right along with your with your profile photo is your cover photo, um, and this is something that is more visible when someone actually clicks through to your profile on Facebook. Um, and it's, it's, it's going to represent, uh, your brand as well, but, um, this is where, um, the recommendations come in place. A lot of businesses, they like to incorporate cover photos with a lot of heavy text. Um, I always tell brands to use a photo that's a bit higher quality, something that's going to be more engaging and eye catching, um, and, you know, not as cluttered. Um, and then just as important, if not more important is the, the about page on your business, right? This is, this is probably for businesses, the most visited section of the Facebook profile because it contains not only your address, but any information or contact information that you dictate is important, whether it's a website, uh, you know, whether it's a phone number for someone to call your business to order something, um, this is where it all lives and you have power over what you choose as your contact information. But having it complete is important. Um, so again, this is also an, uh, an opportunity to to speak a little bit about your business and what it's about. Uh, so you can you, there's a section to state your mission, uh, what the vision of your business is, what your story is, which is always important for businesses. Um, any company information, um, and uh, you know throughout the presentation you'll see these pro tips or advanced tips uh, that I like to give businesses. So uh, one of them is Facebook allows you to customize sections that record your business's milestones, right? So whether that's like awards or you're launching a new product or you're releasing a new menu item, you can, you can uh, select milestones on Facebook. And what happens is it, it gives a priority on, on people's timelines. It, it presents it a little bit differently. Um, and it's just a way for your business to have a history online. So definitely utilize that sort of stuff uh, when you can. Um, it you know, just allows you to maximize your exposure there. Um, and then equally important is your Facebook profile as a business allows you to have a call to action button. Um, so basically, that's going to be different for any business, right? So the example we're using here, they're a retail store. So they obviously want to drive people to the website. They want people to, to go shopping on their, on their page. Um, so they opted for a shop now call to action button. Um, the call to action button again is, is going to be tailored to your business, but you do have some options that Facebook offers you, um, and they are pre-selected for you, but you do have those options to pick from. So it could be anything from sign up to, to a call now button, which, which is great if you're going to need to utilize, um, just because a call now button, you know, you click and, and you're, if you're on a phone or on a device, it instantly uh, dial the business, which is a great asset to have. Um, and if you want to drive people, if, you, if you're having a little bit of an awareness problem where maybe people don't rec don't know about your business as much, you can always opt for to create a video um, and have a button drive to, to the video itself to maybe speak a little bit more about your business. Um, the, the, key, the key here is a conversion, right? So uh, you want to drive people off of the Facebook page and over to your owned assets, whether that's your website or, or a landing page. Um, you can customize that URL 
Um, if you get a little bit more deeper into these sort of things, a URL, a customized URL allows you to measure specific channels. So if you are driving traffic to your website from Facebook and from Twitter and from another channel, you can customize the URL to be different and drag to the same place, but you can measure traffic and see what channel is, is giving you the best results and then sort of lean into that channel and spend more, more time there. Um, so something to keep in mind. Uh, the next thing is when you're posting, right, you, you got to know your audience. Uh, so, you, so that's things like demographics uh, and all this stuff may seem like common sense, but uh, knowing who you're targeting is important and you can do that by studying your current base. If you've been on, on social media on Facebook for, for a couple of years, you already have access to demographics. Uh, you can see who are the people, what's the age of the people who follow you? Uh, what's their educational background? What's the gender? Uh, you know, all those things uh, are, are, are accessible to you uh, via the analytics portion. And that can give you an idea of who your audience is there. You can also pair that with what your business goals are, right? Do you need to sell items? Do you need people to walk into a store physically? Do you need to, to have people uh, create appointments for you? Whatever that goal is, that's going to determine not only your messaging, but paired together with demographics is gonna, it's gonna determine what is successful uh, for you on your channels. And then obviously is uh, what makes you different as a business, right? You, if you're a real estate agent, you have com competitors out there, you gotta differentiate yourself from the pack. Uh, same thing if you're a restaurant or a retailer, uh, lean in on your story so that people kind of uh, uh, become, they, they become familiar with, with your brand and, and what you stand for. Um, now, the important thing and, and what most people always tend to care about the most when it comes to these presentations is content. Um, always the question I get is, okay, so what should I post, right? Um, so, you know, one thing about social media, there isn't one right or wrong way to, to do it. Um, every business is unique, but there are some best practices out there, and I'm and, um, happy to share those with you guys. Um, so one thing that I always tell people is, you know, content is, is king on, on any social platform, right? Some, some channels just favor different types of, uh, of, of content a little bit differently. Uh, the main thing is that you wanna make sure you, you wanna, the goal is you're trying to create a relationship with your brand or your business with, with your followers. And the way to do that is you wanna try to encourage some sort of interaction. Um, the example that, that I see here, or that I'm showing here is, you, you, again, this, that same retailer, um, the, the, the visual is very heavy, very, very engaging because it's, you'll see it's mo mostly photo and really no copy, right? But here, what they want to do is they want to try to engage with the audience. So they're asking people to, to commit and make an, make an action, but it's nothing, uh, that isn't fun, right? So it's like comment, a high emoji, a final week's got you in your field. So they obviously know their audience. They know their age demographics, so they're speaking to them. Um, they're, they're, they're being playful by using emojis. Um, and again, they, they, how does this affect their, their bottom, like their goal, right? Because it, they're a retailer. So what does this do? Well, you're creating engagement, you're, you're creating familiarity, you're creating connections with your followers. And then they're, they, because they have, they have leverage as a retailer, their call to action buttons, you'll see that they have, they've been able to, to actually uh, use a call to action button within their posts. Um, and you can do that too, uh, as a business. It, it's, uh, when you create your Facebook profile, there are different categories you can create your business on. Um, and based on that, it gives you, uh, the, it, it unlocks the ability to create call to action buttons for your posts. Uh, the majority of them will be the ability to have people one click message you directly on the platform. But if you're a retailer or other type of restaurant, or a restaurant or other type of business, uh, that unlocks different call to actions that you can now utilize to go along with any of your posts. Uh, anything that makes it easier for your for your 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 consumers or your customers to to engage with you is always a a, a plus, right? Uh, now, an, an important aspect about content is the the communication versus broadcasting, right? With I've been a part of a lot of businesses and, and they kind of fall into, they tend to fall into uh, a little funnel of just broadcasting. And what I mean by that is, you know, oftentimes the focus is let's just post something, let's post something. 
and uh, you know, and 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 let's just we need to get it out there, right? So they'll post on multiple channels, uh, and they'll get content out there. But then what happens is people will actually start engaging with them, and then there's no response, right? They just the content's out there, and they kind of forget about it. Um, and really, that's just not a best practice. You you need to make sure that you're you're building that relationship because it's part of of social media. Um, and then you're also training your clients and your customers, right? If you are putting content out there and they reply to you once and they never get a, a, an engagement back from you, they're not going to comment again, most likely. Um, the other way around is if you actually engage with a potential customer or current customer personally on social media um, and you actually have a conversation, then guess what? You, you've just acquired not only a, a new customer, but uh, potentially a, a faithful customer. And then uh, as long as that interaction is positive, um, they're more likely to, to, to engage on, on further future content as well. Um, so make sure you're responsive uh, and uh, take note of feedback, right? So I, I tell small businesses this all the time. The, the big brands, the, the big players out there, they, they spend a lot of money for, to get consumer feedback. And that's stuff that you can get for free on your channels. If, you, if someone is giving you feedback that they don't like something about a business or they were treated bad, you know, they'll take it personally, always address it. Uh, and, and, you know, and, and, and bring it back to the business and see if that's something that you can maybe improve on. Uh, that's stuff that's invaluable for businesses. Um, and I know I'm conscious of the time here, so I'll speed through a lot of stuff, uh, but, um, you know, video versus photo, always use video. Uh, one, one pro tip that I like to, to, to tell businesses is, uh, you know, with the addition of, uh, Facebook live videos, live videos get three times, uh, uh, more visibility, so they're more likely to be seen than pre-recorded videos. Um, and really, the, the reason for that is simple. Uh, you know, when, when the business who uh, goes live, any of the followers uh, or many of the followers will get a notification saying, you know, X business or person went live. So they, they, you get more of a, a notification to, to your followers to go and click over on that video. So that's one aspect of it. And then after the video finalizes and it has played, then you have the option to just let that video live on your platform as a regular video, and then it's going to generate some more some more views. Um, so you know it's 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 a little bit more tedious, right, to go live because it's you know there's always the I don't want to be on camera aspect of things, but um, if you can definitely leverage it, do. But again, worst case scenario, you know, post a, a visually appealing photo uh, when you can. I know video is not always an option. Um, and, uh, but you know, always definitely use some sort of media along with, with whatever post you're, you're doing, uh, posting strategy, a big question that I get all the time as well is how much should I be posting? Uh, you know, again, based on your audience and, and your brand story, there isn't really one, one right answer to that. I always tell people build, build a calendar, um, use tools for scheduling. If you, if you want, these are an example of tools and I can share those with you guys afterwards. If you guys want those. Um, how often should I post? Again, no right answer. Uh, you know, find your balance. But I will give you, I will give you, you know, for those of you who really want an answer, I'll give you uh, the pro tip answer. Post afternoons and evenings. Uh, that's when people are most likely on Facebook. Uh, post between 1 and 4 p.m. Um, but avoid being robotic about it, right? If you post every single day at 1.30 p.m. every single day, um, it's just, you know, it's going to, it's, it's less like a real person and more like a robot. Um, but I always tell people, you know, when in doubt, just post twice a day. It's good for creating brand awareness. Um, and it's consistent without being spammy, right? Um, there is a section about Facebook algorithms. I'll skip that, but it's really interesting in how to uh, make sure that your, your content is ranking a little bit higher. As a business, if you guys are aware, if you guys haven't paid, at, paid to, to uh, have your content seen, then you know a lot of, a lot of people don't see content for pages. Um, and this algorithm kind of breaks down why, um, and, and Facebook has sort of created an environment that's like pay to play, right? Um, so anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll go through those uh, so that we can uh, jump into uh, the Instagram portion, um, because I know that we're running a little bit uh, low on time here. Um, are we gonna uh, host, are we gonna stop for questions or should I just uh, jam through this one? We can have our users submit the questions through the chat feature uh, and we can move on with uh, the Instagram presentation. So. Okay, cool. I will jam to this. I'll skip through the history. Um, and 
jump right into maximizing your account profile. So uh, Instagram is, 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 although again, owned by Facebook, right? It's, it's uh, uh, the environment and the ecosystem within the tool is, is different. Um, so uh, mainly you have two types of accounts. There's a business account and a personal account, right? When you go to, to as a business, make sure that you're incorporating a business account uh, that just uh, opens up tools for you and, and, and allows you to maximize uh, a, a lot of other things that you wouldn't be able to incorporate if you weren't uh, as an accountant, just using Instagram as a personal account. Uh, the, there are instructions here on how to activate a business account. I'll skip through that again for time. Um, but if you guys have questions, I'm going to give you guys my contact information at the end of this. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to me and, and happy to help uh, where, where I can. Uh, so all, the first thing that's important about uh, Instagram is your name and username, right? And I always tell people, and this, in this, a lot of these things are, you know, are always evolving, and, and this may change uh, pretty soon. But as of right now, the only things that are searchable on Instagram are your name and your username. Okay, so your username is your handle, right? What you pick, something that's unique to to your account. Your name is something that you dictate what it is. Uh, as you can see, you can type that in and you know, it doesn't matter if it's the same as someone else. Um, but when someone does a search on Instagram for, for you know, they click this button and they wanna search for, for your business or, or, or something, if what they search isn't living in your handle or in your name, you're not gonna appear uh, within that search, right? So I always tell people, if you're a retailer, add that to your name. If you're a restaurant, add that to your name. Uh, there's an example here with this person who's a, who's a blogger. She has her name here, and then she also adds style blogger, right? Because she knows that, that those terms will then be picked up by, by searches and, and be as a, almost serve as a, as a key term uh, for that category. Uh, so it's important to keep that in mind uh, on Instagram. Your biography, that's probably the most popular section on, on, on Instagram, right? You always hear people talking about, you know, link in my bio and, and things like that. So we'll, we'll go a little bit over that, but your, your, your bio, sir, first of all, should be like your elevator page because again, similar like your, your Facebook profile, this is going to be the first exposure to your business, uh, uh, for a lot of the consumers that are out there. Right. So, uh, it's the first impression. So make sure that, that it's clear. Um, it's the first thing people read. So, um, you know, and it's usually the, the last thing they see before they decide if they're going to follow you or, or contact you, right? You have 150 characters, so you can maximize that as, as much as you can. Uh, here, I'll, I'll give you some pro tips for your bio on, on Instagram. Make sure you're clearly clear communicating what you do uh, and, and what's in it for the audience, right? Like, what's, what's, why should they follow you? If you can add that in there, it's always a plus. Um, uh, a call to action is always good as well, and, and I'll tell you why in a bit here. Um, but this is also the opportunity to show your personality. You know, again, it's a lot to ask of 150 characters, but you can get creative and, and, and you can definitely do that. Uh, make sure that you, again, because this is your first exposure to people, make sure that uh, you're being descriptive, right? This example here is, is pretty, pretty good, I think. Uh, you know, it's, it's, you, you understand what they do, what kind of like what, they, what their mission is, what they're about. Um, and then you get the category here. Um, and then there is an, a, a fold here that you can click for more and I'll go a little bit uh, into that. But uh, essentially you, you gotta make sure that you're conveying a message before someone has to click on the more button. Um, so the, the elusive link in the bio, not elusive, but popular, I guess. It's, it's, uh, the reason why it's important is because it's the only clickable link on Instagram. If you guys have used Instagram, you'll know that if you uh, post a photo or a video, and then you add a caption, even if that caption contains a link, it's not clickable. Um, that's why people always use a post and they'll, they'll say, you know, click the link in my bio because their bio is the only place where they can insert a clickable link. And that link should drive to whatever the outcome is for you, right? Whether it's your, your website or, or whatever. Here's a pro tip for some of your businesses out there that have multiple landing pages, different services. You can use things like, uh, like Linktree, which is like a free service, uh, you can incorporate uh, for, for landing pages. And what that does is you can create a bio uh, that then drives to a landing page. It gives people different options. Uh, you know, if you want to drive them, if you're a service-based business and you offer different services, 
you can then fine tune what these options are to drive them to the right page on your website. Um, so it's just something for businesses. If you have, you know, if your business is set up that way, um, it's a great thing to incorporate. Uh, Instagram has action buttons. Uh, again, I'm not going to go too deep into this, but definitely important. Uh, it, it's based on your business category. Uh, when you set up your business account, you can specify what the category of your business is, and that then unlocks the different uh, call to action features that then that you can then display those on your actual account. Here, this, this is an event, so they, they've unlocked the ticket call to action. Um, and, the, uh, and then we, we go to, we move on now that your profile, we're, we're assuming your profile is 100% complete. Um, and now you go to content, right? And again, going back to, to captions here on, on Instagram and why they're important. Uh, the main goal of the captions, you want, re again, you want readers to convert, right? So you, you, if, if that's the goal, if you're driving uh, conversions, then you want to make sure that you're driving people to the bio so they can click on that link. You want to get that click. Um, obviously, you want to you want to make sure that your posts are are diverse and, and engaging. But again, the bottom line is always a, that conversion, right? So here are some examples of that. This is this is the the same the same photo, the same post, the same business, right? Um, and you'll notice that. Uh, Within captions, there's also another fold here where people would have to physically click to get more information. So here you see uh, before you have to click uh, before you click on the more button. There isn't really a clear call to action. It's just uh, a lot of wordage, right? And 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 when when you click the more button, this is what it, it reveals. It reveals a a call to action that tells people to tap the link in the bio. So again, if this copy isn't isn't uh, compelling enough to someone to click on here, you probably aren't gonna get exposed to people to that call to action button. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, here, this is, this is actually really important for retailers. So uh, if you're a retailer on Instagram, you can unlock this feature where you can actually post products or you can post a photo and then, and then specify that it contains products. And what that does is it unlocks the ability to drive people to buy things directly on Instagram, which is, huge for, for retailers, right? Um, here's the example of that post and what that looks like. You see a little product tag. That means that this post contains products that are for sale from this, from this business. Um, what happens is when you click on the photo, then these things get revealed. And then you can click on any of these things. That want, if I wanna buy this mug, or if I wanna buy a sticker set, I click through and then I, it takes me straight to a, a, a purchase page or, or a shopping cart page where I can, I can complete the transaction, right? Which again, for conversions, is amazing. That's great. Um, again, going back to, to the more, the above the fold content, make sure that that content is, is appealing so that people will click, uh, either keep it shorter or, or make sure it's appealing enough to people click, click through to more. Um, and again, re reiterating that. Um, here is a, a pro tip for Instagram. Uh, it doesn't provide uh, analytics on how many people click the more button, but it, it affects the algorithm, right? So if you have content and, and, and your copy is long enough to where you have a, a, a more button, uh, if you get a lot of people clicking on that more button, then Instagram is gonna, it's gonna say, this is content that people wanna see or engage with, and it's more likely to rank your content better uh, than if you had no engagement, right? So just keep that in mind as well. Uh, this I'll skip through this, but this basically the summary is make sure that you you are uh, uh, thinking that keep in mind that Instagram is 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 visually centric. So uh, most likely you're always going to need to think about the content first and then the caption second, right? And exceptions are there. Like if you're a local news station, you probably are going to be more focused on the copy of the of the caption than you are on the on the on the visual, but. Uh, again, very rare, right? Uh, here's a, a pro tip for your call to actions. Instead of just saying, uh, go to the my bio or, or hit the link in the bio, uh, some people like to include their own handle within the, their, their, their caption. And really what that does is it, it uh, gives people the opportunity when they click on your own caption within the, in your own handle within your caption, then it takes them back to your main your main uh, page in your bio. So it gives them easy access to your link. Instead of having 
to manually hit the back button and then go into your, your profile, right? It, it takes uh, either the equal amount of clicks or less clicks uh, by doing this. So uh, some people like to encourage that. It just says hit the link in my bio, they'll put the, the clickable handle and then people can go there. Uh, anything that's gonna always remember the less clicks, the more likely people are to convert. It's just a, a rule there. Uh, and then again, making sure that, that your, your content is, is key, make sure that your, your photos are clean uh, and, and high quality. Um, you know, you, you can incorporate, uh, you know, words on images, uh, just, you know, keep in mind, there are ways to do it correctly. Uh, people on Instagram is, is, you know, they, that channel, you got to think about the way people are scrolling through the timeline. You got to, uh, be interesting enough for people to stop and, and actually view your image or your content. Right. So make sure it's appealing. Um, here's a pro tip. Uh, when done well, people are able to recognize an image that belongs to a page, right? Like, so create your own style. Here, with with this example of this page, you you see that their images are very similar. So, if you were to come across one of these images, not only because of the products, but the the, the way that they they shoot their images, you would probably be able to instantly recognize that it's coming from this business, right? Uh, GoPro is a great example of that, just because even though it's user generated content uh, on there. Just the, the the aspect of the of the fisheye of their camera, you you can you can tell that it's it's coming from from the GoPro account, right? Um, and there are different types of posts on Instagram. There are carousel, uh, which means just multiple images. There's video up to sixty seconds on a regular post. Uh, there's IGTV, which I won't really cover here, but it's really an important aspect for businesses, and and it, it gives you it's another secret way to get clickable content, but Again, that's a whole nother thing and feel free to reach out to me and I can go over that. Um, but it allows you to create videos that are longer than a minute. Um, and then uh, stories, you know, utilize your stories or 50 se 15 second segments that live for 24 hours, uh, but they tend to be more engaging uh, than other content. Uh, and then uh, use your story highlights, right? This is uh, not new anymore, but you can customize that to, to give people more content to engage with on your profile. Uh, so make sure you're utilizing those. Um, and then important before I, I stop here, because I know we're at time, is the 80-20 the rule. Uh, I always tell people this, for content, uh, make sure that you're 80% of your content, you're giving something of value to your consumers, whether it's an entertainment video, something. And then 20% of the time is the ask, right? Is 20% of the time is uh, go to my website and click this or, or check out this product or whatever. So keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to skip a few things here because again, of time, but if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. My email is on the screen there, miguel at influenciaagency.com, um, or feel free to visit the website and there's more information there. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Miguel, for that very insightful uh, information. Definitely really, really good information for our business owners out there. So again, a reminder to send uh, any potential questions into the chat uh, feature if you have those, so we can uh, uh, send those over and, and talk about them during this webinar. Uh, now, I would like to move forward with our next speaker. We have Charlene Collazo from Order Sleep. And so we're going to be talking about how order sleep is pretty much uh, helping the food, food service industry. And in my opinion, they, they could even be saving a lot of uh, business owners, uh, restaurants specifically with uh, their app development support. So welcome, uh, Charlene, and thank you very much for joining us this morning. Hey, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much, Juan, for the uh, introduction. Let me uh, turn on my video here. I don't know if you guys can see me. Can you guys see me? Oh, yeah. Yes. Hi, guys. Just really quickly want to introduce myself. Like Juan said, it's Charlene Collazo with uh, Order Slip. Um, and i uh, going to go over with you what, we're, what our mission is currently during this COVID-19 um, pandemic that we're going through, what it is that we're doing to try to help local business owners um, in the Central Valley especially, but we do help everyone nationwide, but central, specifically on the Central Valley, what it is that we're doing. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, share my screen with you here. All right, can you guys see my screen? Nice and red. Okay. All right, so what is order slip? So order slip 
is a company that actually originated in downtown Fresno. So we are home, our headquarters is in Fresno. We're a local. Actually, uh, Charlene, sorry to interrupt. This is Sandra. It looks like we, your, the presentation's not loaded yet. Hmm, interesting. Hold on one sec. Is it just slow or? Could be, there's no. I might have to get out of it and go Okay, you see it now? Yes, perfect. Thank okay, you. Awesome. And do you see the entire page or is there like the little blocks on the right hand side there with your guys's? No, it's the full full screen. Awesome. Okay, great. Sorry about that. Not really sure. Maybe the internet was a little slow. Um, all right. So yeah, order slip. What is it that we do? Like I said, or like they mentioned, we build mobile ordering apps for restaurants. So like I was saying, we, um, sorry. All right, so we originated downtown Fresno. We are part of the Bitwise family in downtown Fresno. We have four campuses. Uh, we, we were started by one of our employees there that helped the client out and said, hey, we, we built this guy an, uh, an app. It's gone gangbusters for him. He's done really, really well. I think we could do this, and we could do this for anybody. The mom and pops out there that, that maybe want to stay on par with you know, the big guys, Chipotle, or, or with uh, you know, Chick-fil-A to have their own apps. We could do this for everybody so that everybody could be on the same exact level as those big guys, especially in the Central Valley. So we wanted to help out the best way we could. So we created order slip. So order slip, like I said, is a part of uh, Bitwise Industries there in downtown Fresno. We are all very local um, and uh, we do some great work out of Bitwise Industries, Chef Th Shift 3 Technologies, which is actually our um, software company where we build software for the likes of Amazon, Nike, uh, you name it. We build uh, software for all these very, very large companies. Excuse me, my phone's going off. Um, all these very, very large companies um, right out of, you know, great looking little Fresno. Um, so we'll move on here. Okay. All right. So what do we do? We build restaurants, mobile ordering apps. So we would build, as an example, if anybody's ever used a mobile ordering app, such as the Starbucks app, where you could download the app, look at Starbucks menu, pick out what it is you want to buy, pay for it on the app, and then Starbucks simply receives that order, fulfills it, and you simply walk in and pick up your coffee and walk out. That's what we do. We build apps just like that for clients just like you. The apps that we would bill you are actually apps that would be on Apple's App Store as well as the Android App Store. We support Square customers and Clover customers as a POS. If you use any other type of POS, we can still help you out. We can still build you your app. That is not a hindrance in any way, shape, or form. All right. Well, one sec, my uh, internet's going super slow here. Okay. So your app, we tailor the app to actually suit your business. So it would be your logos, your branding, your color scheme, your menu available to your customers for download. Uh, and then also the, so that, that way, if you have, sorry, my internet is going really slow. All right. So your logo, like I said, your menu, the customer's fingertips, they have it in their hand able to use and, and actually order directly from you. And in these times where it's social distancing, the best way we can do these things are either by online ordering or through an app. And so that's what we come in where we would build you your app that your customers will go to the actual app stores and download and be able to order directly from you. All right. So we make it easy. Uh, order slip. We take the, the guesswork out of food ordering. 
plus your team is also freed up. So if you have a customer, an associate that's on the phone constantly taking food orders, this frees that associate up. This associate now can go help in other aspects of the business, maybe uh, cooking the food or maybe you know um, um, helping the owner with a, some accounting or whatever it is that they, you could use that extra team member for. This takes them away from that phone and it has them doing uh, other, you know, other duties within the restaurant. Um, if you have any, if you have multiple locations, that's not a problem. The app will know exactly where your customers' whereabouts are, and it'll recommend them the closest location that they that they, that is near them. Your app can also include takeout and delivery options, uh, and it even saves your customers' favorite items. So if they constantly order that burrito, they can save that burrito, and when they go back on your app, they can click that burrito, that one button, click another button that pays for the the, the food, and that's it. So it creates a lot of convenience when ordering uh, your food. So with, as far as the restaurant goes, what this does for you, it actually uh, allows your, your orders to be very precise. So it means that you lose less, less food. So if the customer calls, calls you on the phone, orders the food, and they typically would pick up, pick up the food and, and pay for the food while they show up, this takes that away. The customer will actually pay for the food via the app. That way, if they don't show up, they've already paid for it. So you're, you haven't lost any money on that food. There's no wasted money. And then also, it'll increase your revenue. So you're not, you're not losing any money. And at the end of the day, you have a happy customer because, and for whatever reason, this day and age, you know, we want to just text. We, wanna, we don't really want to talk to anybody on the phone, apparently, these days. So this allows them to kind of sort of text their order in uh, without having to actually make a phone call to the, to the actual restaurant itself. Um, why is this a better experience for the customer? The customer has order ahead capabilities. So the, the customer is able to go on your app and let's say it's 8 a.m. They don't have time later on when they have lunch because they have other you know, duties or other errands that they're running. So let's say it's 8 a.m. and they know at 12 o'clock they're going to want this burrito from their favorite burrito restaurant. So they'll go at 8 a.m. when they have time to make the order. They'll go on your app. They'll, they'll, they'll order. They'll pay. And then they'll set up their pickup time is 12 p.m. That way, your restaurant will receive that order. Our system will let you know, hey, this order needs to be prepared now. You prepare the food. Customer gets a text message letting them know, hey, your food's ready for 12 o'clock. It'll be ready at 12 o'clock. Customer simply walks in at 12, picks up their food, and walks out. So the they have capabilities to order ahead, which is awesome. And like I mentioned earlier, they're able to favorite items and they're also able to look at their past history. Any, so like myself, I use the Chipotle app all the time, but I always order the exact same thing. So I just go back to my order history. I click one button, I click the other one to pay and that's it. You're going to have, your customers will also have that capability. They'll be able to order uh, their favorites with one click and also uh, check out their order history and, and uh, order their past and, and order that exact same thing. And like I mentioned, we can build your app where it's pickup only, where it's delivery only, or where it's pickup and delivery. So your customer has that option to pick up their food or to have the, the food delivered to them. The great thing about the app is that the, the app we build you will have an in-app rewards program. So we, we, the customer, the more they order, the more rewards they get. And the good thing about that for you, uh, the, the, the restaurant owner, is that it allows you to, to have loyal customers coming back and coming back for more because they want to get you know, the reward, the, those rewards and earn, a, and earn a, a coupon or a free meal or whatever it is that you decide you want to give them. Uh, they, they get the ability to earn that. And customers love that. I know I do. And the really cool thing about the app is that it's safe. You pay for your food in the app. You don't, there's no exchanging of money. There's none of that stuff. So the customer, before they ever get to you, that food's already been paid for. So all the, they're probably going to be in your location for 30 seconds. They don't have to stand there, especially with the social distancing that's going on now. They can literally walk up, walk out. No having to stand there, giving you the credit card and, and all that good stuff. No, it's already paid for. And like I mentioned prior, you're out no money if the customer, for whatever reason, doesn't show up. You already got paid for it. Hopefully they do show up, but if they don't, you already got paid. So there's absolutely no worries for the, the restaurant on that end. Okay. So we want you to know that we're with you. Every subscription to order slip, it includes fast and easy onboarding. We have professional account management team and a hands-on technical and customer support. Um, 
even better, we're not doing any commissions. We don't do any commissions at all whatsoever. We have one flat rate monthly, so you know exactly what you have, exactly what's going to come out every single month as far as what order slip is, as far as what order slip is involved in. We only give you, we only charge you once per month, no 20% here, 30% here. We're not doing any of that. It's nothing's hidden. It's one flat fee. So it just makes it very easy for you to budget at the end of the month, you know, exactly what's coming out. Uh, no, no gimmicks or anything like that. In this time, we want to help order slip. Uh, the CEO specifically wants to make sure that we are helping our local, our local businesses. So what we're doing is we're building these apps completely for free right now. That's a thousand dollar value. We don't really charge a thousand bucks to get this off the ground for customers, but we will actually build these apps 100% free. Also, we're actually gonna get waive our fee for at least three months. At least however long shelter in place uh, is, is, is in place, uh, we are vowing that we are going to not charge you a penny. So at the very least, we're gonna give you three months free if for whatever reason it starts, it gets a little crazier and goes a little longer, then you know what, it goes a little longer, then we're gonna give you the service for free for a little longer. But at the very least, we're committing to three months of free service. So not only will we build your app completely for free, have it launch on both app stores, we will also waive our fee for at least 90 days. And that's our commitment to you um, as you know, local, local business uh, owners in, in the Central Valley, but also we're doing this for anybody nationwide and actually we have international customers that we're doing this as well for, uh, as being as this, is, this pandemic's uh, you know, hurting the entire world. So I just wanted you guys to see some of our amazing local partners. Uh, we have Butterfish California Pokey. They have actually three locations in the Central Valley. Central Fish Company, Teriyaki Don now has two locations, one in Fresno, one in uh, Merced. So these are apps that we've built for these folks that are on the both app stores right now and you can download and order from. These are just a couple. Uh, we have many more uh, local, uh, local partners. Um, so please, if you guys can, please go to these restaurants, use their app. Just kind of help each other out, especially during this time. Order some, you know, order some food from them. Please frequent them. Please patronize them. Uh, patronize, patron, be their patron. Sorry. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, there's my information. Like I said, we will build your app completely for free to help with COVID-19, and we will waive our fee for the first three months. Um, and that's what we do in downtown Fresno. Thank you so much, Charlene, for that great, great information and for all that you guys are doing at Orders Leave that definitely uh, does help our, our local businesses, our local restaurants, and obviously I'm pretty confident that uh, they really, really much appreciate all of the support that uh, they're getting from you and your team. So I do have a, a quick question from one of our uh, participants here, and he's asking if this would be able to be applied for a retail store? Uh, is this only limited for uh, restaurants or are you guys able to work with uh, other retail stores as well? We're able to work with other retailers. Um, what I would ask is just give me a call mm -hmm. uh, or email me whatever, you know, the, my information's there, whatever is best for you. Um, and let's talk it over. Our platform is a platform specifically made for restaurants, but we have, um, we have actually used that, that same platform for other types of businesses. Actually, right now we're in the, in the works with a, uh, a grocery store that we're making an app for. Um, so yes, we, could do, we, can, we can use it for other types of businesses. Just call me or send me an email. We could talk about it and, and, and see if it'll work on this platform. Fantastic, perfect. I have another question for you and they're asking if this can, can this app be connected to DoorDash delivery similar to what Chipotle does? Sure, so the delivery portion that we build into your app, we can build it in, in two ways, where your restaurant or your employees deliver the food, which is the most cost-effective way versus giving the commission to a DoorDash or a Postmates. But we understand that you know there's liability that goes with that, so we are integrated and in full partnership with DoorDash and with a company called Postmates, and we're working on others as well, but currently those two are 100% our partners. So DoorDash, if you have a DoorDash account and or a Postmates account that does your third-party delivery, we could integrate those two delivery uh, systems into your app. So whenever a customer up, uh, you know, downloads your app, chooses delivery, they make their, you know, their selections, they pay for your food, 
you, the restaurant, will receive that order, you fulfill it, and at the same time, the most available, the, the available driver with either, either DoorDash or with Postmates, whichever one we integrated for you, that driver will receive the order as well. So you don't have to do anything on your end, you know, receive the order, and then you have to send it over to them, no. You receive the order, you fulfill, we've already dispatched via our technology that the third party delivering a delivery company on their way to go and get the food from you. Amazing. Thank you so much, Charlene. That's definitely great information and especially for our, uh, you know, retail business owner or restaurant business owner. So this is a great opportunity for, for them to, to, to make use of your services, to, to take advantage of this great uh, support that you and your organization are providing to our business communities throughout Fresno County and you know the entire nation and uh, as well as internationally. So thank you so much for joining us today. Again, I would like to remind uh, the participants to send in their uh, contact information if you would like to receive a copy of this uh, webinar recording. Uh, all of the information from each of the speakers will be available through it, so uh, don't forget to, to provide your contact information via chat feature. Uh, so thank you again, Charlene, and we'll definitely stay in touch. Again, thank you very much for what you and your team are doing for, for our communities in this time of pandemic. And now we're gonna move move on with our next speaker. We have Jose Arreguin. Uh, he's a strategic marketing specialist at Valley Community Small Business Development Center. And he's gonna be talking about utilizing remote online communication platforms, which are quite essential nowadays. A perfect example is this webinar right now. We're communicating with each other. We're providing information, facilitating information to people uh, remotely. So Jose, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, take it away. Okay, thank you. So I'll go ahead and, and share my screen. I'm gonna do that one first and there we go. Uh, okay, so as I was putting this together, is it is it loading up? There we go. Yes. Everybody can see the screen completely? Perfect. So as I was putting this together, I really wanted to, to look at what is it that is most important about doing these types of, of meetings online? How can we use them? And more importantly, where is the, the value in doing these, these meetings and, and making sure that these meetings are productive for, for your business? So I wanna start off by first talking about the, the most popular methods, which are the one we're on now, which is Zoom, but there's also go-to meetings, and there's a bunch of other smaller ones. Um, but one of the ones that I don't see a lot of people talking about is Google Hangouts. Um, that one tends to be on everybody's phone or almost everyone's phone or easily accessible. Uh, Messenger has the ability for you to add a couple of people. And then, of course, FaceTime. And then WhatsApp has the ability as well. So those things are important. Now, what I decided to do was to uh, walk you through the setup, which is when I've helped people, this is really where they've had the, the most difficulty and understanding how it works, um, especially if you're dealing with um, Spanish dominant um, clientele, you almost have to walk them through through the process. And, and I'm talking about just like, for example, setting up. So I decided to just kind of break it down very easy. So uh, starting off, if you do Zoom, you, of course you install the software, you set it all up, you create the account. There's two types of accounts, or there's three types of accounts. There's a professional account as well as a free account. What is the, the difference, biggest difference is in the, uh, the free account. If it's just you and someone else, you have a limited time. If it's you and two other people, then they limit you down to 40 minutes. But and then at the end of 40 minutes, you restart the, the meeting and you can continue. It, it really is just uh, um, how long you plan on using it or want to use it. A lot of people have taken it and said, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and pay the service for a couple of months and then they just have pre reign of, of having a lot of meetings. You've probably seen a lot of uh, um, people who are at home are using it not only for business, but they're using it for reunions. Uh, for I've, I've even seen where they play uh, games on it with family night with their extended family. So um, I know I used it uh, ugh, must have been like three weeks ago uh, around there. We played a uh, loteria. I set up a camera just for the card, and another one for the, the flipping of the names of the cards. So that was a lot of fun. So let me just get into setting up stuff. So some of the things that I think you should take in consideration if you're a business and you're gonna be having frequent meetings 
and, and you don't want to be hassling with uh, sending them the ID, you could actually set up one ID and then send it to everyone. And then that's the ID that they use every time. Um, another thing you want to uh, take into consideration is creating a, a waiting room. Um, why you create a waiting room? It all really depends on, on who you're meeting with. This is, say, for example, you're going to be doing it with a bunch of people who may not know each other. And uh, much like this meeting, what they did, which was cool, which they were up 15 minutes before, and they put up a slide, and then as everybody joined, it, and they had it muted, the, everyone was able to see what it is. But if you don't have that luxury, you create a, a waiting room, and uh, if they join early, they, they sit in the waiting room waiting for you, and they don't necessarily get to connect and talk to each other, and, uh, and so it's a little bit more control of how the meeting works. Um, some of the settings that you can do when you're setting up a meeting that are, I think are absolutely important is uh, muting all your participants when they're going to enter the meeting, uh, making sure that their video is either working or on or off. Um, those are things that are important depending on, on what the meeting is about. If it's an open to the public meeting, then absolutely locking that down. I'll cover some of the, the security features in, in a couple of slides. But those are kind of some of the most popular things is the meeting ID, uh, requiring a password. Um, sometimes that's awesome and sometimes that's not because not everyone pays attention and sees the password and, and does what they have to do and then so you're kind of sending them a message or I, this happens all the time, the texting back and forth, what's the password? I don't know the password. So it really depends on the level of security that you want for that. Um, and then also deciding whether you're going to send the, the link to the invitation via the, the Zoom software, or if you're gonna just go ahead and copy and paste it and put it into your uh, software, I'm mean, sorry, your email software. Um, I tend to uh, lean towards copying the invitation and then going into my email and then pasting it, but then also editing some of the, the extra information that's there, just and then focus on, on the information that's most important. You know, definitely always include a phone number to call now Sometimes that is not the best feature just because the amount of phone calls that they're, the amount of phones that are being used in these calls. And so sometimes Zoom will limit that. Sometimes they won't, that's been my experience. Um, um, and I've also, in when I send them a link, I also send them a link to a YouTube uh, tutorial on how to use Zoom. So just in case they've never used Zoom, they could click on that tutorial and, and watch the video and then they kind of get an idea of what to do. So that tends to be some of the things that, that we do when you're setting up a meeting. Um, make sure you go through, if you look at one of the pictures on there, you can actually go through and schedule the meeting and then set up some of the, <clears throat> excuse me, some of the preferences on there. So let's talk about security because I know that we've all heard about Zoom being, what do they call them, Zoom bombers, where they come in and they share their screen or, or they're doing things inappropriate on camera and things like that. So some people don't know to be able to take them off. So number one, if you're concerned with security, then go ahead and put it in password, especially if it's something that's not open to the public, if it's sending it to your employees or sending it to your customers or whatever the case is. Again, waiting room. Um, you can allow for people to have to sign in instead of just clicking on. Um, then once everyone is in, you can actually lock the meeting so that no one else can join and you don't have to worry about it. You guys can focus on, on the work at hand. Um, you can disable, uh, for example, the, the ability for them to share their screen. You can take that off so no one can share their screen. Um, you can choose people to be hosts on there as well, co-hosts. Um, that is on the paid feature. And then, of course, mute participants. And then as long as you have someone who is um, taking care of it and watching the, the chat features and, and when you have to uh, answer a question, you're watching people as they're asking the questions as well. Hopefully I'm not going too fast, but I know that we're over on time. So I just wanted to cover that part of it. But those are some of the, the biggest security things on there. Um, and let me look here and there. All right, so hosting a meeting. Some of the things that I would recommend for you to do when you're gonna host a meeting is exactly what they did today, is show up early. You know, make sure that you have a, uh, if you have the ability to create a sheet and share the sheet, uh, a page, so that everyone can kind of see what the meeting is going to be about and they kind of click on it and they're like, okay, cool, I'm in the, in the right place. Double check your settings when you're waiting, making sure that you've undid, you've done the password or not did the password, the waiting room, all that stuff. 
create your page so that you can see who's on your page, on, I'm sorry, on your meeting with the participants. Um, and you can do that by setting up through grid views. Honestly, I just recommend that you open it up and then you play with it and you'll get, you'll get used to some of this stuff on there. One of the things that I like uh, that I see Sandra do a lot on all of her uh, Zoom meetings is um, she does a, like a mini tour of the chat button and the features and the muting and unmuting, things like that. So I think that someone who's never been to a Zoom meeting, this is absolutely uh, crucial for them to understand what their process is. Um, and then especially how to chat, how to be able to ask questions via chat. So recording your meeting, why is that important? Well, I, if, if you're doing this to attract business or if you're doing this to, to get people to follow you or whatever it is the reason you're doing it, by recording your meeting and then reposting it uh, via a link on any of your social media or a link on your, your website, it allows people who did not have the time to uh, meet with you or to join the meeting in progress, um, allows them to watch, I'm sorry, to hear and or watch the meeting at a later time or at a, at a more convenient time. So that, even though that's important and it's giving it out, I, I think the real value there is that you get that added exposure, that added opportunity to share the message that's most important. So those are, those are some of the, the the reasons why I think recording a meeting is absolutely important, not to mention also just in case you want to double check what was said or, or what was presented. And, and if someone's asking a question, and they don't have uh, an opportunity to be at the meeting, then they can absolutely do that. So um, some pretty cool features. I don't know if everyone knows them. Some people do, but there's uh, of course the virtual background. You can change that. Um, and that is on the lower left-hand side next to the camera. There's a little up, like a, like a little uh, roof or, or up arrow. Click on that and then it allows you for you to change your virtual background, add it. You could even add video, whatever you want. There's some people have different settings on there. Um, you know, when it comes to your meetings, if it's, a, if it's a not necessarily a, a just professional meeting or open to a public meeting, it's within your employees, uh, within your certain customers, um, I've done it where in a sales meeting, I put the company's logo behind me so that that way they can um, they can get a kick out of what's what's going on and what they can see it. So that's cool. Um, mute button. I don't know if all of you know this, but you can use a space bar to mute and then mute. Um, so you could have a mute. Somebody asks you a question instead of trying to quickly figure out where to click. You just push down the mute button and it allows you to mute and unmute. The whiteboard is something that I don't see a lot of people use, but it's uh, if you guys are, are all working together on a project, you can share things through there. Y'all can add stuff um, on the fly. Um, also, there's a bunch of plugins that you can use that will incorporate Zoom into, um, say, if you use Google, I'm sorry, if you use Gmail, um, I have a, a button that all I do is click it and I can start a meeting with a click of two buttons. Um, and then from there, just send them the, the uh, meeting ID number. Um, I encourage you to play around with the gallery views. Um, there's some plugins for that as well so that you can add yourself and all of it so you're always seeing who you are. Um, if you have a lot of participants and uh, a lot of them don't even have, uh, have, don't have their cameras on, then you can actually just select that in your button. And then um, that'll hide all the people that don't have their cameras on. And then you only see the people that have their cameras on. So it, it allows for, for you to kind of control your space on your desktop. And I think that's, that becomes for somebody who's doing a presenter or somebody who's watching, it makes it a little bit more interesting. And then um, there's a feature that I always add this feature because it's a, it's, it's a feature that a lot of people like just to click on it. But that, that it's been referred to as like the beauty filter, but it's really just to touch up your appearance. Um, it does a little bit of a blur on it or something. It just depends. Um, but that's always a pretty cool feature. And so people, you can play with that one as well. Um, I don't know how I'm doing on time, so I'm just going to keep going. Let me know how much time I have left. I apologize. I'm trying to go fast and not too fast. So I think the, the most important, the most important part of this, of this, uh, uh presentation that I'm doing, that my part of it is why should you do an online meeting? Oops, typo. Um, you know, it's, it's a really good way for you to keep in contact with, with your employees. If, if you've had to lay some people off and or if you have them working different shifts or whatever the case is, um, asking them to ju all jump on a Zoom meeting, it, it gives you the opportunity for them to be able to see each other first and foremost. But secondly, 
it allows you an opportunity for you to update them all at once, uh, give them a, an opportunity to chat with you. But more, more than anything else, especially in these times, it allows them to reconnect and feel like they're part of a team. So if you have employees that you had to, that you had to uh, lay off or they don't get to see each other as often, um, this is a really good way for you to create a, a team cohesive feeling uh, between them. Um, and you can do it once a week. You know, I know some people do it every day. It just really depends on, on where you're at. Um, it's also a really good way for you not only to just have a meeting with a client, but what if, if of a product or a service that you provide and you invite four or five clients that you think would be you know, pretty cool for them to meet each other and set them up and do a, a group presentation or, or just a group chat to kind of connect everybody. Um, it allows for you to continue to keep those connections thriving and it allows for you to be able to um, look active, be active and proactive so that your, your clients know that you're working and that, that you're on top of things. Also, for customers, um, it isn't just about, you know, speaking to one client at a time, but let's say, for example, you're a restaurant, and this just happened recently on, on Good Morning America. Uh, a guy shared how to make his, his, one of his plates, I don't remember which one it was, and it, and it went viral. So this would be a really good way for you to open up your business and say, hey, everybody, join me. We're going to do a how to cook a certain product that you do. Why would you give away one of your recipes? Because it allows people for them to connect with you. What a great opportunity to do that now and this time. Um, and then you get those followers who then are going to like you that much more because you're sharing something. And uh, you're able to engage them, remind them that you're there, and then um, offer them a service when, when they're online. It also offers uh, or explain, gives you an opportunity to explain the new way you're doing business. If uh, you know, everyone knows about the curbside, um, there's some stores that are doing delivery. If you go online, you order their product, and then they'll deliver it to you. I know that there were furniture stores who were doing that, and then just recently one of them got fined. Uh, crazy Bernie's, I think that's what it was. But so there's a lot of other businesses that they're doing that. If you are, for example, I know nail salons are doing this as well as hair salons. They were putting packages together for hair care products and, and et cetera. And now imagine if you had set up a Zoom meeting for that and you allowed your customers to come aboard and then you share what you were doing, how the product worked, what it did, how to unpackage it, and then how to use it. And then at the end, you said, if you haven't ordered it, you can order it now, you know, DM me or whatever it is. And then you've now created a new way to do business for yourself um, in these times when you just have to really be innovative. And then last, last point on this one is, it's really about just creating the new normal, growing your business in a way where it is the new normal. It is how we're going to do business so that when, when all of the shelter in place gets released or, or we get uh, permission to do more things, we can continue to do business this way and it becomes an additional revenue stream. So it doesn't have to end. It just be another way of you doing it. So you're going to have your website, you're going to have your social media, and then you're going to have your clients that you do this kind of work with. and. Uh, It'll allow them for it to interact with you in, in a, another way on top of the things that they're already doing. So that's, that's pretty much it. I, I know I went pretty fast, but I just wanted to give you all that information. This is great. Thank you so much, uh, Jose, for sharing this great tutorial on using Zoom. Uh, there are some features that even myself was not aware of. Um, and, and with that, I, I, we, we did see a question come through. And the question is, why is it that my picture shows up on some Zoom meetings, but not on others? You know, I don't have the answer to that question. It, if you're using the same account, um, it should appear, but it really depends. I'll give you an example on, on, on mine. It had to do, for example, right now, I have a picture that comes up, but if you look at mine now, there's no picture that comes up. It really has to do with how much you're allowing them to, to share. Um, but specifically, I don't know the answer to that question, but I'll, I'll find out. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jose. That was a, a very interesting and insightful presentation, especially talking a little bit about the security 
uh, in terms of uh, utilizing the, the Zoom platform, which is quite important, especially nowadays that everybody's using it. And I know there's a lot of, you know, hacking going on for, for some uh, businesses and, and organizations out there. So it's really good to have an understanding of, you know, how to navigate these, these platforms, how to make use of them. Uh, so it's, it's very, very, very useful for sure. So thank you again. Uh, uh, this will be the, the end of presentations for today. Uh, I want to thank the, the presenters. I want to thank uh, our co-host, the Fresno Area Hispanic Foundation, and the, and the rest of the, the, the team that was able to facilitate and make this happen. Uh, as you all know, we're always looking forward to uh, facilitate information, facilitate resources, and connect our business communities uh, to the services that they, they need at the uh, Fresno Business Services Center. So uh, with that being said, I would like to share our um, webpage with all of you, uh, www.fresnobsc.com for future and upcoming webinars. Uh, I know we're going to be posting more webinars, uh, webinar information on Monday of next week. So please uh, make sure to visit our webpage and uh, don't forget uh, to reach out for any particular uh, information that you may need. If you need help with your business, we're more than happy to connect with you and provide information and facilitate the resources and the services that you may need at this time. Uh, we can also help uh, people uh, that have been impacted uh, by the pandemic, whether they lost you know, their job and they're looking for another opportunity out there, uh, we're more than glad to connect with you uh, as well. So again, thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, again, I want to invite you to visit www.fresnobsc.com to find out about more uh, webinars coming up uh, in the near future. And again, thank you Sandra very much and the Fresno Area Hispanic Foundation. Uh, the Fresno SVDC, Influencia, and Order Slip. Uh, thank you everyone for, for uh, making this happen today. Thank you, Juan, for the, for the invitation. <clears throat> and on behalf of the foundation, I would like to share some webinars that we have coming up next week. On May 7, we will be hosting a legal workshop with our Coleman, with Coleman and Jorge and Mr. Daryl Horowitz will be sharing updates on new restrictions and rules for businesses during COVID-19. And on Friday, May 8, we will be hosting a Spanish webinar and our presenter is Noemi Chavez who will be covering tools and resources for business owners to continue operating their business remotely during the coronavirus pandemic. And to register for these events, you can visit our website at fresnoahf.org forward slash events and we will be, as mentioned, these, these what weekly webinars are, are uploaded um, every week, and we try to host one in English and in Spanish. And another program that we have coming up is our Womanpreneur and Latinapreneur program. And, <clears throat> sorry, this, this program is it's a, <clears throat> it's a four month program that will consist of two cohorts to provide marketing workshops for English and Spanish speaking women entrepreneurs. The topics will focus on enhancing and developing marketing strategies to sell their products online and survive during the COVID-19. The program will provide eight virtual workshops that will be hosted through Zoom, and there's no cost to participate thanks to our community partners. Uh, and also, registration has been extended to Tuesday, May 5. And if you are interested in participating or perhaps you know of a woman entrepreneur that would great, be greatly benefited from this program, please send them please have them send us an email to incubator at fresnodbh.org. And once again, there is no cost to participate in this program. And with that, uh, we will still remain in the line for any other questions with our participants. And like Juan mentioned, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you, Charlene, Miguel, and Jose for providing such great information. I know, I'm sure we all took at least one um, great learning opportunity from, from here. <clears throat>